I'd be out in the pews sitting by my mom jumping up and down because <laughs> the senior choir would sing this song and they had a really great bass section. They would, those guys would go, no, let us know. And I'm, I'm just going, oh, that is so cool. <laughs> I was just a little idiot just dancing around. I had a song. That was my favorite song. I said, sing that song every Sunday, guys. Listen <laughs> to the choir. Yeah. We are so grateful, oh God, that you are so available to us that we can have not just big talks, heavy, dense, intense talks. We can have little talks with you. Amen. Not the little things, the small yeah. things, the seemingly insignificant things. That we can talk to you before they turn into big things. Help us to listen and trust your will and your way as you whisper your wisdom to our hearts and our minds and our lives. Amen. Amen. Um, I know I'm a pastor of a Christian church, but I got some major issues with this Jesus person. Okay? And I need to just be honest with you right off the bat because today's passages are some of the most uh, challenging. The gospel lesson in particular, this is, uh, we're coming to the culmination in the end of the Sermon on the Mount. And so Jesus is really putting forth his values, his principles, making clear to all of those that would be his followers, which includes us, what his agenda and what his expectations are on those of us that would say, oh, I want to follow you, I want to be a Christian. Because we need, my sisters and brothers, to be very serious and very practical and very pragmatic about what we're signing on for. Because the title of today's sermon is more than what we bargained for. That's, that's today's sermon. It, it actually is. And so every individual in every ch Christian church everywhere has to decide if they really are getting what Jesus is saying and what Jesus is asking of each of us. And are we willing and ready to really sign on and stick with it? Thank and then the culmination of it all is that last line that Dane just read. Be ye perfect, as our Heavenly Father is perfect. Oh, we might as well all pack up and go now. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine saying to your significant other, be perfect. <laughs> I need you to be perfect. <coughs> and you're going like, yeah, right. Hey, 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 hey. Because we, we recognize from our human perspective, from we're, we're human, we're, we're, we're flesh and blood, and we know the unrealistic reality of, and the impossibility of perfection, right? And so, why Jesus would you ask that of us? Are you asking of us the impossible? Be perfect. <laughs> then we might as well all get our grab our coats and go now, right? Because that's not realistic. We know our limitations. We know we're well acquainted with our faults and failures and inadequacies and shortcomings. And we're really good at pointing each other's out to one another, too. Amen. Amen. Okay. <laughs> and so we're in our homes, we're in our jobs, we're interacting with one another, and <clears throat> we're really so busy being in survival and sustainability modes that this thing about, I mean, that is just so out of our realm of reality, we're just not going to even consider that. And so that maybe that's why there's so many few people that, you know, maybe uh, church attendance is declining because folks are saying, this is not relevant to me because it's not realistic. It's under expectation. So we have to then step back from these singular passages 
and step back and recognize the context and the, the, the whole message that Jesus is couching this very discomforting statement in. We need to recognize that in the, on the Sermon on the Mount, when Jesus is preaching to, he is trying to get his followers to embrace the reality that the reign of God kingdom of God already has begun and it is already happening and that we have the opportunity, the option to partner and participate in that unfolding reality of the reign of God. So what is the reign of God? What is the kingdom of God? It is an existence that and I've talked about this many, many times in sermons past. It is an existence where all people are other-centered. All people are other-centered. Such that when everybody within the realm is caring about each other's concerns, nobody has concerns. Right? And so I'm really glad that when Jesus says, be perfect, he adds the thing, as our Heavenly Father, as God is perfect. We are asked, my sisters and brothers, to love as God loves and to interact as God interacts. So, so let, let's just let's break that down. Let's break that down. If there was nobody else, if there was nobody else but you and God, Okay, just let's, let's break it. Let's keep it nice and simple. It, it's I'm walking around and it's just me and God. What is what is as I reflect? What is my experience as I live out my personal <coughs> relationship and interactions with God? Okay, so if in that personal relationship I have with God, I am receiving. Unconditional love. I am receiving forgiveness when I mess up. When I, I am receiving generosity and support and hope and peace. If this is indeed what is happening with me and God, and then and and then I say, oh, thank you, God, you're so good to me. I love you with all my whole heart. Thank you for loving me in spite of me. Okay, so we got this, this going on. And then God then whispers to us, okay, we got this great thing going on. Now what I'm asking is that you would replicate. Use what you and I got going on. And replicate that and let this be a pilot and a daily example for you to then use on a horizontal. So when Jesus says be perfect, it's not about being flawless. Because that's what that's where our brain, when we hear the word perfect, be perfect, we our brains go to flawless. Right? Don't don't they? We all we go to this place where and we know that's, that's not realistic. But when Jesus clarifies and said, just replicate what God and you got going on. Just duplicate that and, and put it into interaction. If you're really, that's why in the Lord's Prayer, <coughs> forgive as you are forgiven. Love as you, are as you are loved. Give as you have been given. That's what. And, and so one of the commentators made this great comment. Um, Barbara Essex, Essex. She writes, perfection is less about getting things right and more about loving as God loves. That puts it well within the realm of doability. I don't need to toss out the whole concept now. Now, because, and the reason it now is within the realm of doability is because if I've been experiencing it and practicing it on the vertical, and I'm well acquainted with it and enjoy it, 
I love receiving it, right? I got this great thing where I'm so glad God forgives me in spite of, oh man, it's so wonderful. Oh, he looks beyond my faults and sees my needs. Oh, I love this. This is great. Okay, we enjoy getting it. Now, he's saying, but the realm of God, the manifestation of the kingdom of God, the realm of God, is when it actually happens both vertically and horizontally. With one another. And Jesus is, is bullheaded and determined enough saying, the kingdom is coming, it's come. It's, it's here. And you and I have to just choose. It's going to happen. Now, all of us have been listening to the horrific stuff that happens in the news all the time. I mean, this lady in Riverdale that was sexually assaulted in her home. Um, the stuff going on all over the world. We, um, there are just so many horrific things that happen in our society and in our communities that make us say that, oh, there's just evil people out here. There's evil people that have no intention of, I uh, mean, their strategy, uh, the, um, was it we were talking about the Medicaid uh, fraud thing we were talking about mm. yesterday uh, that's on the news and people out here strategizing about how we can hurt. I got to believe that as much as the news is inundates us with the horrific bad things that their evil people do in this world. I'm one of those folk that like to believe that there's more good folk out here than bad folk. Just don't hear about it. We just don't hear about it. We don't see it. I know that the vast majority of people that I know are, are committed to day in and day out just trying to do the right thing. Trying to be a good person and be a loving person and hopefully get respected and give respect. That, that to me is where most people are. Unfortunately, the way our news and media is, you would think that, oh my God, there's chaos and corruption and, and mean and evil everywhere in which you think that that's dominant. Our texts and Jesus is saying, no, it's not. Because you and I have someone that the people of God can represent. That's why several weeks ago Jesus said, you are a light. You are salt. Remember? Didn't we talk about that the other week? You. You and I are the instruments, the vessels, the messengers, the ambassadors, the, the manifestations of that, what seems impossible and unrealistic, is doable, is possible, is real. So yes, it is more than what we bargained for, because we really wanted to just have a faith and a spirituality and a relationship where we're in this, oh, feed me, Holy Spirit, feed me, Spirit, fill me, empower me, help me, help me, 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 me. And that the, the source of all these wondrous gifts is then saying, share it now. If you're so grateful, if you're so appreciative, if you're so happy and enamored with all this love and grace and joy, and then I need you to then make it happen. Live it. That's why the psalmist says, I delight in your commandments and your laws. I want it to emanate from my heart. I want it to be a part, an intrinsic part of my physiology. And, and, and I want to live love like you demonstrate love. So, this is not asking of us. We need to be very clear. All of the commentators are very uh, unanimous on this. And Jesus, uh, Jesus' point 
is not to be other people's doormats. Okay, that is not what is being said. When we think of the work of Gandhi and Mother Teresa, and especially Dr. Martin Luther King, their message was based on nonviolent resistance. Matthew Bolton, biblical commentator, points out that by exercising non-opposition, the obedient disciple is working toward extinguishing not the opponent, but rather the opposition itself. It is more than we bargain for. <coughs> but if we have it horizontally, if we have it vertically, every day, practice it. Would you pray? God, this is doable. Thank you for helping us to understand that it's not about being flawless, but about demonstrating the love that you give us to the love of those around, to those around us. This forgiving love, this generous love, Indeed, O oh Lord, your scriptures repeatedly remind us that, God, you are love. And that Jesus, the Christ, your Son, it was the physical demonstration of self-sacrificial, holistic love. Jesus became flesh and dwelt among us, and we thank you that he would then come to show us the path. Show us the methodology. Show us the way to live your kingdom and to bring into this dark world your reign. With your help, all things are possible. We pray this and claim it in Jesus' name.